Good morning and welcome to this time of worship. Whether you are coming to us through a small church community here with Lutheran Church of Peace or you are finding this on our website or our YouTube channel at a later date, we're really glad to have you joining us as we hear God's word for us today. Last week we had a fantastic Easter celebration. We were outside in the parking lot with a drive-in worship. It was a beautiful day. Just a thank you again to all those who helped make that happen. It takes countless hours and people to move everything outside, the altar, the not this altar, but we have a portable one, um, the flowers, all everything that has to get set up and decorated and put together, and then all of it taken down and all the tech pieces to think through too. So just thank you to everybody. Thank you to everybody who donated flowers as well. Uh, it was really good to be together. And Easter continues today. This is a seven week season. It's not just a one day thing. And so we continue our celebration today, hearing um, what happened after Jesus rose from the dead. And intern Amy will be bringing that good word for us today. Um, let's take a few deep breaths now. And wherever you are finding yourselves, let us open our worship with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Holy and almighty God, we just give you thanks that we are able to come together and worship even when we cannot be together physically. We ask that you would bless the space that we are occupying right now, whether it's our kitchens or our living rooms, our bedrooms. Um, maybe we're sitting outside on the patio or the deck somewhere this morning. Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that we can continue to gather and hear your word. We thank you for uh, the sunshine of Easter morning and the light that has been all around us since that celebration. As we continue this Easter, this Easter celebration, God, continue to fill our hearts and our lives with your presence and your Holy Spirit. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Now I invite you to join in singing our hymn for today. For today is from Luke 24. Now on the same day two of them were going to a village called Emus about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing Jesus himself came near and went with them but their eyes were kept from recognizing him and he said to them what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them. What things? they replied. The things about Jesus in Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and a word before God and all of the people. And how... Our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and, be, and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. 
Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who had said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went, went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all the prophet hath declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they are going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But, then, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven, the elven, and their companions gathering together. They were saying, The Lord has risen, indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and known, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. Word of the Lord. Good morning, and welcome to Children's Time. When you meet someone for the first time, how do you decide if there's someone you want to get to know better? Well, the first thing you do is listen to the person describe him or herself, and then you watch their actions. How do they treat other people? What do they like to do with their time? Actions give us good information about the character of a person. Additionally, you listen to what other people have to say about them. A lot of times famous people have books written about them called biographies. Now, you might not know who Branch Rickey is, but I bet you're familiar with what he did. He was instrumental in breaking the color barrier in Major League Baseball when he signed Jackie Robinson to the Brooklyn Dodgers. Now, your Bible is kind of the biography of Jesus. So before he ascended to heaven, he was talking with two of his disciples who were traveling along the road, and he explained to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. As we read the Bible, we learn the things that Jesus did while he was here on earth, his good actions seen in the healing and the miracles that he performed. We also read about how others describe him. Much of the Bible is a biography of his life. Even before he was born, there were stories that describe his birth and the things that he would do when he lived here with us. As we study the Bible, Jesus is revealed to us more and more in much the same way that he revealed himself to the travelers walking along the road. We can get to know him better by reading his remarkable life story, thinking about what it means to us, and praying for guidance. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for your son. Thank you for the stories in the Bible so that we can get to know him better. Help us to remember when we meet new people, the ways that we can get to know them and look for those. In your name we pray. Amen. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Will you please pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your presence even when we do not see you. Like those disciples on the road to Emmaus, we struggle to recognize you in the everyday journeys of our lives. Be with us today as we seek your wisdom in the midst of the questions we have. Open our eyes and our hearts to your work of transformation in and around us as we walk with you day by day. In the name of your Holy Son, amen. Last week, we were in the wonder of resurrection that continues today. The women were the first to announce Jesus's resurrection and trusted there was more going on than what they could see. Yet, many of the disciples continue to be uncertain by what was lost. Today, we continue with the joyful truth that Jesus is alive and in our reading, picks up right where we left off 
but later that day. It is here that Jesus reveals himself and makes known that he is among the living. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. In the past, I may have been a little foolish myself, thinking I had to go to church to be in the presence of God. And as I got older, there were certainly times that I felt that presence a lot more when I was at church, having my heart warmed by the sermon and being in community with my brothers and sisters in faith. Maybe at one point, you may have thought or felt this too. Pre-pandemic, life was busy with deadlines and meetings and more meetings and sometimes more meetings about the meetings. I always looked forward to and loved going to church on Sundays. There was so much joy, laughter, love, and the best homemade dessert to go with my coffee during fellowship. I also found myself wanting more, more knowledge and more presence of all these things that warmed my heart. In my own life, it was a little like this too. I wanted to make more money. I wanted to take more vacations. I wanted more. Our lives can sometimes be like a roller coaster with lots of ups and downs and twists and turns. Life is great when you're on top. The twists and turns can be bumpy and then there are the down days. Sometimes we get stuck in the down of life. This is where I found myself a few years ago stuck in the days of darkness, days that I felt hopeless, and days that I longed for the presence of Jesus. I took this curiosity with my faith and started going to Bible study. As we started studying scripture, I started to see things a bit differently. When we read the road to Emmaus, Often we read this celebrating the first confirmation of seeing the risen Jesus, and that is certainly good news indeed. However, as these two followers of Jesus were walking and talking about the events of the day, they were still looking sad. You and I know how this story ends and begins. However, these two did not know, understand, or fully see. These disciples, these disciples did know all about Jesus of Nazareth, mighty in deed and word before God. And yet, it was the third day. He said he would rise again. Although they had heard the news of resurrection, it was not enough to wipe away their sadness. Their faith was shaken and their hope shattered. They no longer had their beloved teacher by their side. They were confused, disappointed, and in despair as they were leaving Jerusalem. I wonder where they were going or if they decided to just give up and go home. They do tell Jesus on the road to Emmaus that they had hoped he was the one who was going to redeem Israel had is past tense here. This is something we can relate to as we strive for the good things in life, sometimes with our own expectations, in relationships, our workplaces, and within our communities. We put our hopes in other people and things, and we all know what it feels like when we are disappointed. As these two are traveling in sadness, Little do they know or see that Jesus was right there with them, meeting them in their disappointments. And then, this is where I wish I was there. Jesus is walking along with these two and is leading the greatest Bible study ever, explaining all that was said in the scriptures concerning himself, Jesus, the center of the entire Bible. <laughs> but wait, there is more. Throughout the book of Luke, we hear of Jesus at many meals, 
The most significant is the last meal he had with the disciples. And then here in Luke, it is the first thing he does when appearing with the disciples again. This is no ordinary meal. At the breaking of the bread, Jesus is revealed. And it is here that it all comes together in full understanding as to why their hearts were burning as they talked to him. They received that wow moment in the presence of Jesus through scripture and meal. The head and the heart come together and having understood the meaning of the scripture and seeing the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread, these two followers who were ready to stay in for the night just a few verses ago, quickly get up and go back to Jerusalem to share this experience with others. To share the good news that Christ is risen, risen indeed, alleluia. God prepared the way through the Old Testament and then God responds and reveals God's self through Jesus. The good news is not only is he risen, but also that scripture has been fulfilled. The fulfillment of eternal plans and the work of God. Where are we missing Jesus' presence in our lives? Are there places in our community that our eyes can be open to share and witness the love of Jesus? I invite you this upcoming week to share that love with a smile, a prayer, or your favorite Bible scripture with someone, anyone. We never know who we might run into on the road or if that person needs to feel the presence of Jesus. For me, I have come to realize that Bible study and fellowship is one of my favorite things to do. I love talking about the Bible. Jesus is definitely there. Just like when we come to church on Sunday and when we come to the table to break bread, Jesus is there. Similarly to these two on the road, it took me a while for my head and my heart to come together and realize that Jesus is alive among us, everywhere. We believe in a God who believes in us. God looks at us and sees the best, sees the beloved children, and sees us as partners in the ongoing work of creation. The scriptures prepare us to be ready to understand it and to be open to seeing more than what is going on in front of us and then invites us to respond. Over the past year, our eyes have been opened even more to where we can find the presence of Jesus as we have lived through a pandemic. We have found Jesus' presence outside the walls of the church, with the healthcare workers caring for others, the teachers who guide our children, the law enforcement that protects, and we, we can pray and participate in even more presence to the victims the oppressed, and the lost. Jesus is present with us even when we don't recognize it. And nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. God listens to all our conversations. And when we have these moments of feeling shaken or shattered, we have 100% certainty that we can have hope in Jesus and the fulfillment of God's promises. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Amen. i
Let us join our hearts together in praying for the church, the world, and for all those who are in need. Let us pray. Holy and almighty God, thank you that you are a God that is with us on wherever the journey is taking us. Thank you that you are a God that has seen and heard and felt and experienced everything that we might ever see and hear and feel and experience. And so we know, God, that we can bring all of whatever is happening in our lives to you and that you can transform it, as you did for Jesus, into new life. God, we thank you that you have revealed yourself to us in this way through Jesus, that we can see and know how much it is that you love us because of Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. God, sometimes we have a hard time seeing, though. We're blind to your presence that is right in front of us. So we thank you for your, your patience with us, and we thank you that you continue to walk with us and journey with us, even when we don't see you or know that you are there. Continue to open our hearts, to break open our lives, that we might be aware, that we might understand and see and hear and know that you are at work, that you are always at work, working for good for all who love you, for all who are your children. God, your, your mission was to bring all of creation into a new day, to be reconciled to you, and that we might be reconciled to one another. That work continues. And as our Easter celebrations continue, Lord, we ask that you would continue to guide us and lead us down whatever that path might be that you have shaped for us. We know that if you are leading, it will lead us into knowledge and wisdom and understanding and life. And so we place our lives our families, and our community of faith into your good, capable, trustworthy hands. God, we lift to you today all those who are on our hearts, all those who are hurting or struggling in body, mind, and spirit. Lord, you know their names. You know their needs. Bring the healing that you know they need. Surround them with your love and your grace and your care, whether it is anxiety or addiction or depression or grief 
or just uncertainty, anxiety, Lord, whatever it is that is binding us, holding us back from seeing and knowing you and living the life that you have in mind for us. Release those chains today, Lord. Set us free that we might be your people and we might live that full, abundant life. Lord, we pray for our community and our nation as we continue to find a way forward. Lord, through this pandemic, we're so grateful for the sciences and for um, vaccines and for the possibility, the hope that we might come through this really truly. We thank you for all that we've learned in this time. And we pray that that would continue to stay with us. We wouldn't let go of that learning as we come to the other side of pandemic. God, continue to shape and mold your church as we step into whatever this new day might bring. The holy God, be near to, to all your children in all places and in all times. Continue to surround those who protest and those who are part of Derek Chauvin's trial. God, we pray for all parties. We pray for those jurors, for that judge, for the lawyers. We pray for Derek and for his heart to be moved and transformed through this. God, all of this and all of our silent prayers too, we lift to you and we pray in your son's holy and mighty name. Amen. And now will you join with me in praying as Jesus teaches us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.